Now a long long time back I did a top 10 or was it a top 5 Mountain Blade mod video and it did pretty well but people didn't really like it. Probably because you're a cringy idiot. Maybe that but mostly because I feel like it didn't have quite a professional quality about it. And recently I've had a lot of comments asking what about some newer mods that have come out from Mountain Blade Warband. You've not done it for about two years so I think it's time to do a new update of the top 10 mods that you should be definitely playing before the release of Mountain Blade 2 Banlord. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get straight into it. At number 10 we have the Grand Enhancement. Now starting off slow, this is obviously just an enhancement for the native mod. It brings in some nicer graphics, nicer animations, and of course different sounds and things like that. There's nothing overhauling about this mod, but I would say that this is one of the best enhancement mods that you can get for native. So if you love the gameplay for the normal Mountain Blade Warband, but you just want it to look a bit nice, to sound a bit nice, and feel a little bit nicer, enhancement mod, the Grand Enhancement is definitely the one that you're going to be looking at here. So starting off at number 10, this is the one I chose. Now I don't even think this mod needs much explanation. It's at number 9 because it is a fantastic mod but it doesn't really add much so I think people would be a bit annoyed if I put this a bit further down with the rest of the overhaul mods. This is a mod that does one thing and one thing only. This is... <laughs> this is the dabbing mod. And I think a bit of gameplay is all you really need to know about this mod. Now at number 8 we have a bit more of a generic overhaul mod. Now many of you have played Gekko Kuji before, but after the release of that and the success of that, out comes the Diamyo edition. Yes, that I pronounced that probably very wrong, but get over it. It's basically the Gekko Kuji mod, but it's merged with some other cool mods and some cool models and scripts in there. So it's a more enhanced version of this Gekko Kuji mod. If anyone doesn't know, Gekko Kuji is set in Japan and you can go around recruiting samurai and getting some cool ancient Japanese weapons. It is very, very nice. One of the most successful Mountain Blade Warband single player mods. It's, it's an improvement without breaking any of the immersion from the original Gekko Kuji mod, but instead improving it with historical accuracy and the such. So yeah, very much like Gekko Kuju, but improved with bugs and looks a bit better, better animations, new scripts and things like that. So I wouldn't say it's an overhaul of the Gekko Kuju mod, but if you've played that and you want something a bit more, this is definitely the one for you. But even if you've never played Gekko Kuju, I'd definitely jump straight into this one since you're not losing anything from the original Gekko Kuju mod, but you are actually gaining things from this new enhanced edition of it. And I feel like I've said Gekko Kuju too many times that it sounds even weirder than it already did. Now Napoleonic Wars is one of the best DLCs for Mount and Blade Warband, I would say the best, and it's the most successful of course, sprouting so many different line battle things, but everyone wanted a single player for it. This is a solely multiplayer DLC, and finally Langley that came out, I would say a year or so ago now, is the single player Napoleonic Wars mod that everyone was waiting for, and it is amazing. It is very well optimized, it's very well made with cool animations and scripts. You can get musketeers, you can get cannoneers, you can get lancers, everything that you would get in the Napoleonic Wars multiplayer DLC, but in single player. Now, Sons of Faith is an interesting one. Have you ever wanted to recreate the Crusades? Deus vault throughout the lands and make sure that no one survives in your way may it be killing the crusader factions or the muslim empire this is the mod where you can recreate your religious fanatics and probably offend a few people but nonetheless it is a very well made mod the textures the armor the models are on a point and they have some really cool things like little waving banners and it looks absolutely awesome i remember doing a series when this first came out but this has been updated so many times and it's one of the most popular mods for mountain blade warband so i definitely recommend you guys going and checking the sands of faith mod out now the next one is a mod that I don't think many people have played at all because it came out a few days ago. This is Skyrim Civil War. Many of you may remember. Wait, you did a video on that? Yes, I did. And I didn't even know that it wasn't properly released yet. I just found a link to it and thought, hey, 
that's pretty good. Sorry, I should really not steal memes. But I just thought it looks really cool, so I decided I'd play it, and then I was told in the comments of the video that this mod wasn't actually technically out yet, so technically I shouldn't have a copy of it. But I found the link, so, you know, I guess you guys can go and download it as well. If the mod developer is watching this and he doesn't want loads of people playing at the moment, then, uh, obviously, don't do it. But Skyrim Civil War... If you can't find the link at the moment, it'll be out very soon. But this is an awesome mod, obviously set in the world of Skyrim. Very cool armors, very cool modern maps. Custom maps look really cool. I did my Siege of White run the other day, so if you want to see a full gameplay of this mod, go and watch that video. It had some interesting moments in it, let's just say. Now, so many people are getting bored of Rome single player mods, but me personally, Rome is probably my favourite time era of the mods from Mountain Blade Warband. It is for Rome, and for Rome does not let it down. It is absolutely awesome. I just love having legionaries forming shield walls, doing some cool formations. You can have some cool custom formations in here, and then charging into battle against the barbarian scum, firing your peeler into their chest, going through their shields and absolutely breaking into the enemy line. And no one can survive from a peeler to the nostril. And trust me, I have tried it before. Now if you're into something less historically accurate but still in the historical genre, the Trojan War is definitely something you should keep your eye on. Now of course this is a mod set in the Battle of Hastings, so when you're trying to fight against the invading up it's not Hastings? Now, I don't think I would have got that from the title. Yes, of course, set in the Trojan War. I would say the Uvic cap is kind of pushed up a bit to 200 against 200, but of course, Mountain Blade doesn't run that very well, so I think about 100 versus 100 is probably about the limit you can do if you've got a decent PC, but it's still better than the 150 over all that you play in the normal Mountain Blade Warband, so that's nice. So they push the cap up. They've got some really cool custom battles and things like that. You can do the Battle of Troy, which is nice. You can do some other ones that are from the film. Um, I say it's less historically accurate because it follows more of the film rather than, of course, actual history to do with the Trojan War, but it is good fun nonetheless. You can play as Achilles and his Myrmidons, and it is a lot of cool stuff. Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage. World of Ice and Fire is another Game of Thrones mod, a lot like Clash of Kings, but I would say improved upon it very many, many much. I think it just looks nicer and it has a lot nicer feel than Clash of Kings. I mean, Clash of Kings was such a popular Mountain Blade Warband mod for the Game of Thrones franchise, of course, but for me, when I played it, it felt a little bit clunky a bit older, and World of Ice and Fire is a more updated, newer version of Game of Thrones Mount Blade Warband. It didn't come out too long ago, so many of you might not have played it before. You can recreate some of these awesome sieges, like King's Landing, Dragonstone, and all that good stuff. The Siege of Marine, if you want to do stuff like that. But the World of Ice and Fire is a perfect mod for the Game of Thrones fans. <laughs> Now what could be at number one? Because many people think that this Game of Thrones mod is amazing and is the best mod out there, but me, not me. I am special. Probably in too many ways. And a special man with special needs always needs to have something a bit further, a bit different to what other people have really played. And this is a mod that I don't think I've really seen on YouTube that much, except for my friend Timby, he's done a video on it. But well, I think I'm going to do a video on it soon because this is an absolutely awesome mod. Now, Evelet from the outside seems like something like a normal native experience in Mount Blood Warband with a few enhancements, but it adds something much bigger, much more in depth than that. It adds to Mountain Blade Warband a story mode. Yes, I repeat, a story mode. You can go through this whole main story mission with some side quests and things like that. You can go into dream sequences where you do awesome things like flying carpets through the air, doing separate missions, you go on like hitman missions and things like that. It's absolutely awesome. Now this whole story mode is so much fun to play. Yes, it's in Mountain Blade Warband so the engine sort of limits it somewhat, but it's just does something so different to any of the mods that I really played in Mountain Blade Warband. And this is why Everlet is at number one. I definitely recommend you guys go and check this mod out if you want some sort of different experience in Mountain Blade Warband since 
no one's really had a story mode that has one single mission. A bit like the story mode in Viking Conquest, but I feel like in Native it just has this. I, I just love the feel of it in this game. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've got any more experiences of Mountain Blade mods that you'd like to add to the list, make sure you leave a comment down below. And thank you for all the suggestions for making this video, since I think I have put together a better list than I definitely did before. But if you guys want to go and check that out, I just go and find the Dark Ages in my channel. Trust me, you're not going to enjoy it. But other than that, guys, make sure you're following me on Twitter for some more giveaway news and things like that. And, of course, some updates on my life and what videos are coming out soon. But until then, guys, I will see you in the next one.